you're going to see some ideas, some of which you might love, some of which you might think are half-baked, and some of which don't work at all. And there can be um, occasionally a very uncomfortably long journey between uh, ideas to uh, outcomes. And, and I'll give you an example. Whenever we talk about innovation and we talk about great design, uh, usually the, the name Apple comes up. And it came up a couple of times today, you'll remember, in some of our sessions, people were using it as an example. One of the things that some of you might not know about Apple uh, is that when Steve Jobs came back to uh, help save the company from some of the troubles that it was in, he didn't go out and hire a new head of product design. Uh, he, the, the man who has actually created the iMac and the iPod and later the iPad, Jonathan I, he was already working at Apple for five years. So imagine if you had been toiling in Apple in some part of product development, not necessarily feeling you were getting hurt, and suddenly a Steve Jobs comes back, recognizes your talent, your capacity to give a contribution, and drives and enables you to do that. I think that's often the difference between ideas that launch and those that fail. It's having those champions. So what we'll be asking you through this process is to be that champion, to identify the ways to find the good ideas and to find the people uh, that can make them possible. So um, I'm going to ask, yes, thank you to bring those up. So uh, our first uh, area looked at innovation and uh, commercialization. And the first idea that was offered was learn to celebrate uh, failure. Uh, it's interesting. I think that as a culture, we can be pretty uh, hard on ourselves. I think I can say that we're, we can be very hard on ourselves at Expo Canada sometimes in the ideas that we put forward, but we, we try to, uh, to support each other. But our, our tolerance for risk uh, is certainly uh, not the highest. We've seen that said about the venture capital community uh, here in Canada, but even among people who are willing to take risks in starting uh, new ventures and opportunities. So uh, it, it's a, a hard lesson uh, to do and a hard thing to implement, but that was uh, one of the first things that we happened here. Uh, mentorship by experienced entrepreneurs. So there are some mentorship programs in place for uh, IT professionals, and certainly there can be more done to create uh, more established programs that allow the successful entrepreneurs to work with those who are just getting into the field. Uh, the other idea was to build a hub for everybody, something that would uh, bring this fragmented community closer together, because we have technicity, we have uh, the Mashable uh, organizations, uh, you know, there's Startup Toronto, uh, there's a whole slew of these uh, things that are going on uh, almost every week and, and every couple of nights, so how can we uh, bring that together? I think that's something that we'll be talking about a lot more in terms of the future of the Technicity website and certainly uh, the future of itbusiness.ca, so, uh, so stay tuned uh, for that. If you could move to the next slide, please. Under intelligence and capability, so one of the more challenging areas, I think, is how we make Toronto a more intelligent city and, and, and the industries that work in there to be seen that way. Uh, to, the idea was to lobby for improved infrastructure. So one of the big trends that we have seen in IT over the last, I guess, year or so ago, is this infiltration of consumer technologies into the enterprise. And it's caused all kinds of problems for CIOs, some of which are dealing with it quite well, others less so. But I think it's fairly safe to say that for a lot of us, the technology that we are using at home can in some respects be superior to that which we are given to work with uh, at work. And so in being able to invest in the kinds of tools that create a really productive environment uh, and a really healthy uh, environment, if we're talking about IT infrastructure in this case, uh, it can really help us invest more in that human infrastructure that we need uh, to be successful as organizations. Uh, the industry to brand itself as a, as a public good. So what's more important to you? To make sure that your garbage is picked up on time or that the technology systems that you depend upon every day of work at home are running uh, to their best capacity. I don't know if we've yet gotten to the point where we equate those things with the same level of criticality and priority, but it needs to happen in order for us to, to have a city that can be perceived not only as intelligent, but as efficient and capable. So it's not just something that the city has to do from a municipal level, but that we have to look at as employers and as startups. Uh, for companies to realize the potential of immigrant networks, so maybe not the best way to, to describe that, but I think what we're talking about is making sure that we have a very inclusive and uh, diverse uh, workforce. Uh, some of you may have been uh, attendees at the recent uh, Toronto uh, Tech Talent Summit that was organized by ICTC where they talked a lot about this and what companies are trying to do to look at skilled labor and how they can um, acclimatize that and, uh, and bring that into uh, organizations. We need to do a lot of work in that area, not just at a high level, but at, as individual uh, employers. Uh, next slide, please. 
integration uh, and collaboration. I, I popped into these sessions as they were going on. And, uh, there was uh, one that was raised, it was uh, mentioned by a facilitator at the table, uh, Anthony, I, think she, I don't know if he came up with it, but it was the idea to have a, sort of a stock exchange of ideas within companies. And as you put value towards you know, some ideas over the others, they would rise to the top and you would act upon them. A really interesting idea. Um, a national skills database. Again, ICTC actually, I think, has done some work in this area already, but um, the problem, of course, is that with new technologies, the skill set changes over and over. We're, we've done a lot of stories already about you know, what cloud computing has changed in terms of what organizations are looking for, for people to not just deploy networks and to uh, optimize uh, technology, but also to understand the new kinds of vendor contracts and the new kinds of sourcing, and to be not legal experts, but being able to uh, know their ins and outs before they commit to things. We'll see all kinds of other new skill sets emerge as mobile becomes more pervasive. Uh, certainly as people get better at grappling with uh, big data, as it's called, so the need for data scientists and people like that. How do you find these people? What do you pay them? And you know, what, what other kind of compensation can you give them to make them uh, to feel wanted as a part of uh, your organization? A uh, mechanism for ongoing communication uh, after technicity. This is something that has been coming up, I think, all, all day long. You know, this is such a great event, and it's so exciting to talk to all these people, but what happens when you walk out of here? Well, I'll, I'll get to that in uh, into the last slide, but, uh, but we have some ideas on how we hope to do that, but certainly uh, I think that um, it's a responsibility that should be shared among all attendees here, is how do we take some of the relationships that are uh, starting here in Embryonic and, and build upon them sure that we all stay as much on the same page as is possible with, with some of the tasks that are uh, as big as we have here. Uh, to link the Toronto ICT sector with other cities globally. You know, uh, I think that we've all uh, seen and read about, um, there are international mayor's councils, for example, that get together and talk about what's happening, happening at a municipal level. I think in some respects, because we tend to, uh, I think uh, Mark uh, referred to this in his presentation, you know, where Toronto wants to kick New York's ass, There's, there is a, a certain degree of competition between cities to be the locus of talent and innovation. But how can we actually uh, communicate in a way that is not competitive, but is still nurturing and supportive of all the shared goals we want to do? Because, you know, at the end of the day, I think what we want is technology that will make life better uh, for citizens, for businesses, for employees, and for everyday people. So how can we, uh, how can we start to do that? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, talent is probably one of the biggest challenges that we have uh, to talk about here today. Um, so the idea to create a farm team network from K-12 to university. Well, K-12 to university, that is kind of already the farm team for all of our industries. But what I think that this idea is talking about is how to be more specifically encourage people to pursue careers, uh, either in computer science directly, or take what they are learning in other programs and augment them towards contributions they could make. You know, I went to school uh, for journalism. Uh, I don't have a background in computer science. Uh, you know, I talk about technology all the time, and you know, there's always that kind of fear that what if people find out that I don't have a degree in IT? I think that there's a lot of that in, you know, I think Sarah Diamond, uh, in her presentation this morning, spoke to that, that even careers in the humanities can be valuable contributors because so much about technology is learning more about the way people behave. And so we're seeing more anthropologists and uh, people from all kinds of other backgrounds uh, start to make their way into the industry. We need to learn how to do that and start to map out what those career paths are and help guide uh, our young people uh, towards that. Uh, to reach out uh, globally for talent. So this speaks, I guess, uh, back to the earlier idea around diversity uh, and inclusion to you know, make sure that there are uh, easy avenues for people to migrate here and, and to bring their skills, their talent, and experience, and that we can easily recognize their value and uh, that they, they can find uh, work that's fulfilling to them. Uh, a very practical idea, which was for Technicity to create a job site uh, slash resume web service for the GTA. Uh, we don't have the resume web service yet, but we do have a great job site. If anyone uh, is searching for talent or is looking for new opportunity, it's jobs.itworldcanada.com. Uh, we launched this about a year ago. So uh, really, uh, it's broadly focused uh, nationally, of course, but there's a lot of uh, Toronto Tech jobs on there. And there may be ways we can filter that through and, uh, and pull that in uh, a little bit more. So uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> So you know, what are the next steps? How do we 
take some of the momentum that we've begun here today and move on to that. So uh, we have, uh, what we're asking for is for people to uh, send us a message about which of these areas they feel they could act upon. So the ideas that were presented just now obviously are very high level, obviously are just the beginnings of what can happen. What I think needs to, to take place at this stage is start to identify what some of the outcomes we would want. And this is what we do with all of our technology projects. We don't do technology for technology's sake. We look at what happens in our business, what do we want to get to, whether it is increased sales transactions, reducing customer churn, uh, improving customer service, and we apply measures to that, and that's how we make responsible technology investments. If we want a stronger, more diverse, uh, more vibrant ICT cluster, we need to do the same thing. We need to look at each of these areas, identify what the outcomes will be, how can we measure them, and then look, do sort of a, a litmus test of the ideas that I just presented and figure out where the next steps are. So, you know, for innovation and commercialization, maybe we see that uh, it might make sense that if we could have another 5,000 patents registered by Toronto ICT, that would put us further on the map in this minutes. That's just out of a can. I don't know if that's a really good metric, but it's an example of the kind of metric that we can point to and start to shape more conclusive actions. Uh, you know, you can walk through these in all, all these kinds of ways, in integration and collaboration. How do you measure and, and say that, yeah, we have uh, a, you know, an ICT cluster that's really talking together on a regular basis? Maybe we measure that by the number of times we have uh, micro events in between today's technicity and next year's technicity whether those are virtual and other, uh, in other ways. Talent, I mean, in some ways, pretty easy to measure because you can look at what is our workforce looking at? Where are the skills at? Where is the gap? And, and how, to what degree have we been able to close that through what we're doing? So please send an email to technicity at technicity.ca. We could not make it any simpler than that for uh, an email. Uh, identify what kind of contribution you can make. You can do it in all sorts of forms. It could be from uh, you know, guest blogging on our site, give your reactions, your observations, and your recommendations to, to further that along. Uh, it could be that you are a guest speaker at some of our other events that we will put on uh, to do this, that you can form committees to actually work more uh, concretely about that. We are more than happy uh, to help that. That's uh, you know, what, what we are here to do. Uh, and also to work with the, the city and our, our partners to do that. But, you know, um, I think that, unfortunately, it, it is going to require commitment but more time uh, and more energy than what sometimes people are prepared to do. There's a sign that's posted in the hallway of Google that says, um, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And I think that a better question for a group like this is, what would you do if you weren't so busy? You weren't so busy trying to build up your customer base to reduce your expenses to try to hire more people. What kind of contribution would you make to the, the cluster at large? Because in some ways that will trickle back to you, it will benefit you in the workforce that you hire, in the kind of customers that you can reach out to, and your reputation in, in, in the industry. So uh, I will ask you to do some soul searching about, about what that is, and hopefully uh, we'll see some answers that are really compelling and exciting that we can report back on at uh, Technicity 2012. That does bring our formal uh, program to an end, but I will ask you to fill out your evaluation forms, tell us how we did, tell us how each other did, uh, and, and that'll give us a lot of intelligence that we can use to, to build these events further. I've been asked a lot about the presentations. There will be presentations posted to the Technicity website uh, for further uh, perusal and, uh, and it'll be the raw materials for some of the activities that we'll work on. Uh, I really want to thank, once again, the advisory board members. They all stood up earlier and we talked for you, but uh, it's a lot of time uh, that you gave of yourself, and we really appreciate that. Uh, thanks especially uh, to our partners, the City of Toronto and uh, the Greater Toronto Marketing Alliance. Uh, so inspiring to, to work with people uh, in those organizations. Uh, obviously, a huge amount of thanks to our sponsors, our gold sponsors, uh, KPMG and Microsoft. I don't know if we have a winner for who uh, did the best score on uh, the golf and the Connect today, but whoever it is, congratulations. Uh, to our silver sponsors, uh, IBM uh, and Infusion, uh, your contribution is invaluable to us. Uh, I also want to thank uh, our team at IT Pro Canada. There's a lot of you here today, but uh, you know our tech team, uh, Matt and uh, Rudolph, uh, Shana, uh, Penny, Nori, uh, Megan, and our editorial team, Brian and uh, Nestor, Christine, and Tyson. Um, but a, a really special thank you uh, that I have to make. And I think there's a lot of people on the advisory board that uh, would say it's very important uh, that I make, and that's to Don Butts. I don't know how many of you know Donna personally, but uh, for those of you that have worked with her at all in this project or in any other, 
you will know that you know all the things that could go wrong in a program or event. She is the one that catches them. She is the glue uh, that keeps uh, this together. And you know, uh, we do a lot of events at Ijuka Canada. Um, and in the Russian, our day-to-day -day things, it would be very easy to forget uh, the level of contribution.